So we've learned for limits algebraically that we want to try to plug in. That's our first go-to method. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't when you actually consider what the graph looks like. So if we can't plug in, our second method is to factor and cancel it to see if we can plug in or use the table of approaching values. If nothing else is working, we can't end up plugging in two or something like that, we will make a table of approaching values and plug in 1.9 and 2.1 and see what those y values would have been without having the full picture. So looking at this first example, we have x minus one over x squared minus one, and we're doing the limit as x approaches one. So our first step is going to be to plug in one to this. I'm gonna plug in each x value in parentheses always, because when it's a negative x value, it does matter. So we wanna just get in the habit of plugging it in. You can use your calculator if you need to, but one minus one is zero, and one squared minus one is also zero. So we get zero over zero. What happens if you plug in zero over zero on your calculator? It gives you an error. So this is not going to be our final answer. Zero over zero is gonna be called our case. A zero over zero case is going to be a hole. And if we think about a hole in a graph, draw what that looks like. Here's a hole in the graph. What do you think is gonna happen with the limit? If you approach the hole from both the left and the right, do you get to the same Y value? Yes. So when you get zero over zero, it indicates it's a hole. And when you think about a hole, that is going to tell you that the limit exists and is finite. It is going to be a regular finite number. It's not going to be infinity or does not exist or anything like that. We're going to figure out what the number is. It might be a fraction or a decimal, but it's going to be a number as long as you get zero over zero when you plug in. So let's go ahead to our second method. We plugged in, it didn't give us our final answer. So we are gonna go ahead and try to factor this. So if you think about the top, the top is x minus one. It is a binomial, it is a difference, but it's not a difference of two square numbers because x is not squared in that numerator. So there's no greatest common factor. It's not a difference of two squares. We can't factor the top. The bottom we can though, because x squared is a square number and so is one. So we're gonna say this is x plus one, x minus one, using that difference of squares method from page two. So we can plug in, that didn't get us our final answer, so then we're gonna factor, cancel, and try to plug in again. So we just did factoring. Does anything cancel? Yeah, these x minus ones cancel. So be super careful, the numerator doesn't go away. X plus one is still in the denominator, and we're just gonna put a one in the top to hold the numerator's place, and in the denominator we have x plus one. And now we want to see, can we plug in? So we'll have 1 over 1 plus 1. And we plug in our x value. And our final answer is going to be a half. So plug in. If you get 0 over 0, that's a good indication that you should be able to factor, cancel, plug in, and get a regular number as your final answer. Let's look at another one. We have the limit as x goes to negative 5. We're going to plug in to the top. I might just go ahead and grab my calculator. And I'm going to plug into the top. 5 squared is 25 plus 3 times, oh, negative 5 squared is 25. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 minus 10. I'm getting 0 in the top. Make sure you plug in those x values in parentheses in your calculator. Then we have 3 parentheses negative 5 plus 15. That ends up being 0 as well. So not our final answer, but it does give us our case. We have a hole that tells me that I should be able to factor, cancel, and plug in, just like the one above. So we have the limit as x goes to negative 5, and we need to factor the top. It's a trinomial, three terms. There's no greatest common factor to pull out, but I can think of what multiplies to be a negative 10 and adds up to be a positive 3. So to multiply to be a negative 10, it must be a positive times a negative. I want to think of factors that differ by 3. So 10 and 1, 10 minus 1 is 9, that's not going to work. But 5 minus 2 gives us 3, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. In the bottom, we have a binomial, so we can't do that reverse foiling that we just did. But we can pull out a greatest common factor for this one. I'm going to pull out a 3 from both of these. 3 times x gives you 3x, and 3 times 5 gives you 15. OK, 
Okay, so we factor and cancel and hope to be able to plug in. We'll see what happens if we can't plug in after all that in just a little bit. So let's try to plug in, and if we divide by zero, we know we'll have to do something else. So plugging into the top, we have negative five minus two, and in the bottom, we're left with just a three. So we get negative seven over three. Another fraction, sometimes it'll be a whole number, but for this one, we do get negative seven thirds. All right, so two very similar problems because they both started with zero over zero. Gave us a whole factoring and canceling worked. The next one, if we plug in negative four, the limit as x goes to negative four, we are gonna plug in to this negative four minus three over negative four plus four. Plugging in those x values in parentheses. So we get negative seven divided by zero. So this is a different case. This is not zero over zero. It is a number over zero. Anytime you have a number over zero, that indicates you have a vertical asymptote. So there's gonna be a pattern here that'll help you get the hang of what you have to do. Zero over zero is a whole, factor, cancel, plug in. Number over zero, it's a vertical asymptote. Well, let's think about our vertical asymptotes. A vertical asymptote, either both arrows go up. And what's the limit for that gonna be? Well, the left-hand limit goes to infinity, the right-hand limit goes to infinity. So this, the limit would be infinity. That might be what this vertical asymptote looks like. But there are a few different vertical asymptotes. It could also be a down-down case, where both arrows go down and the two-sided limit is negative infinity. Or the other thing that could happen is your arrows could go opposite directions. One goes up, the other goes down, or down and then up. What would the answer be there? Well, the left and the right-hand limit don't meet, so our other option for a vertical asymptote is the answer could be DNE. So for a whole, our answer is a regular number. For a vertical asymptote, there's three possible things that could happen here. Our limit could be infinity, negative infinity, or could not exist. One thing we could do is still try to factor this. There's a chance I plugged in wrong and it should be zero over zero, and then it factors and cancels nicely, and I've missed out by not trying to factor it. Um, but with this one, it doesn't actually factor. X minus three is not something we can factor, and neither is x plus four. We don't have any greatest common factors or difference of two squares. So we're gonna go to this last method. We're gonna use a table of approaching values. So we wanna approach x is negative four. So we wanna think about what values are near negative four. We're not gonna plug in negative four, we already tried that, it gave us negative seven over zero, that wasn't helpful, our calculator would just say error. But I can think of a number near negative four that's not negative four. So to the left of negative four, I could pick like negative 4.1. That's really close to negative four, but not negative four. Same thing to the right is negative 3.9. And I wanna remember this is a vertical asymptote. So it's not like, well, one side's going to 10 and the other side's going to 14 or anything like that. They're gonna be going to infinities. They're gonna be up arrows or they're gonna be down arrows. So I just need to figure out what is the sign when I plug in. So if I plug into the top, I have negative 4.1 minus three. What kind of answer would that give us? If you do negative 4.1 minus three, you're gonna get a negative numerator. Okay, we don't care about the number, we care about the direction of the arrow. In the bottom, if we plug in, we'd have negative 4.1 plus four. Negative 4.1 plus four is negative. So if I plug this in, I'm gonna get a negative divided by a negative. This is, must be an up arrow. Negative divided by a negative is positive. So my left-hand limit is infinity for this vertical asymptote. It's going up without bound. Let's test now plugging in negative 3.9. We just wanna see which way the arrow's going. We know it's a vertical asymptote because we got a number divided by zero. We're gonna do negative 3.9 minus three. It's just gonna make it even more negative. Then in the denominator, we have x plus four, so we're gonna do negative 3.9 plus four is gonna be positive. So we're gonna get a negative divided by a positive, which is gonna be a negative. So what's my final answer for this vertical asymptote gonna be? I had three options, either both arrows go up and it's infinity, if they both go down it's negative infinity, or if they go opposite directions, the limit does not exist. What do we have here? Well, the left-hand limit is going up, 
the right hand limb is going down. Our fingers are not going to meet. So our final answer, all that work to figure out the limit does not exist. So much more work if you get a number divided by zero instead of zero divided by zero. Let's see how this could change just a tiny bit. The one below there is the same function, same x is going to negative four, but it's just from the negative side. So it's just the left hand limit. And I'm gonna run through the steps all over again, even though we might already know the answer just by looking at our work so far. First step, you have a limit without a picture. So you plug in negative four minus three is negative seven. Negative four plus four is zero. So even though it's a one-sided limit, we just plug in that number. A number divided by zero tells us it's a vertical asymptote, not a whole. That means we're gonna have to make that table of approaching values. It's not gonna work by factoring and canceling. You can always try to factor and cancel, see if it helps you at all. This one is called irreducible, it does not factor. So we wanna find just the left-hand limit. I wanna approach negative four, but just from the left-hand side, so I'm gonna choose a number just the left, negative 4.1, very near negative four, but to the left of it. And then it's a vertical asymptote, so we don't have, care about the number we get. It doesn't matter if it's 23 when we plug in. We want to know that we're going either to infinity or negative infinity. So plugging in to the original function, we have negative 4.1 minus 3. Going to become even more negative. Then we do negative 4.1 plus 4, still negative. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. My left-hand limit is positive infinity or infinity. So there's our second method. If plugging in doesn't get you your final answer because it makes you divide by zero, if it's zero over zero, you're gonna be able to factor, cancel, plug in and get a regular finite number. If you plug in and get a number divided by zero, well, you can try to factor, but you're gonna end up making this table, which is a little bit longer, um, but your answer is either infinity, negative infinity, or DNE. And in the next video, we're just going to explore a bunch more examples because this is pretty difficult.